Hello everyone and welcome to puzzle solving number 11. In this series, the video is divided in three different stages. Number one, evaluation, where I evaluate the initial position of the puzzle. Number two, calculation, where I use candidate moves to find myself in the complexity of the position. And number three, a summary of the things we could have learned so we can digest all the information we, 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 we went through throughout the video. So. I haven't never seen this position before other than when I was getting ready to record this, meaning that we're going to solve this position at the same time or the first time as well. So one thing that I think you should do to learn the most out of this video is to pause, take some time thinking about this, what will you play and then record, oh, sorry, uh, go through what I recorded right now. And in that way, you can compare with, with what kind of habits you have that I, that I, I have that you don't, sorry. And that making that comparison is the true benefit of these videos. So the first stage of this video is going to be evaluating. And what evaluation is, is that it's giving us this context of what's going on in this position and already here, but just looking at the position, it's amazing. I can sense some motives. So for example, the first thing that I think, uh, or the first thing you should always go for is uh, material. That's one of the most important things in chess, of course, if your opponent has eight queens and you have just a king, of course, that's going to be very important. Um, so I, I think that material wise, we have four pawns as white and black as one, two, three, four, five, six pawns. Um, everything else is equal because we have two rooks and the knight against two rooks and a minor piece as well. So given that we are down in material by two points, uh, we have two pawns, we're down two pawns as white. But let's evaluate other things. That's not the most important part of a chess position. It's a mixture. Mixture, sorry. It's a combination of different things. Another thing that I like evaluating is activity. So let's take a look at that. We have a rook on a1 in a potential semi, it's in a sem semi open file. There's only one pawn on that file. I have a rook on e7, which is in the seventh file. And all of those rooks are pointing towards, guess what? My opponent's king. So activity wise, it seems like I'm better just by the fact that my opponent's king is a little bit unsafe, which takes me to the next point. The next point being king safety. King safety is another very important thing to evaluate when you're looking at a position that you have never seen before or just evaluating in general. In, my, in this case, I think my opponent's king is definitely unsafe compar in, compar in comparison to my own king. My own king on g1 is a little bit unsafe in the terms of the light squares. My opponent does have a light square bishop, but that bishop is on a2, so it's far away. This position seems to be more concrete, more fast, faster than that, uh, quick, dynamic. So this bishop being on a2 is kind of a relief from that point of view. But back rank issues are also remaining. So for example, rook takes a2 would lose immediately to rook d1, uh, which is already something that I want to take to the next point, which is motives. When you've done all of those, you've taken a look at material, you've taken a look at activity, king safety, I think... It would be fair to say, depending on the position, but at least in this case, it would be fair to start thinking about motives. So one of them is rook takes a two, rook d1. That's a motive that black has to, to win the game. One motive that I have is that, let's say it was black to play and black plays something like bishop d5 or bishop c4. I have this motive of rook takes e7 check, queen takes e7, rook takes a7. And after this, I take the queen. And if there was a bishop on c4, I can take that bishop. And if there was a bishop on d5, Maybe it's not easy, but I can take on d8, right? So that's a motive. I'm starting to think about those. And I think slowly but surely I'm starting to run out of ideas, which is a good sign because it means that we have to move on to the next stage of the video, which is the hard work. This is the concrete move by move generation, you can call, where you, you ultimately find the answer. And in order to find the answer, we use, as I explained in the intro, candidate moves. So my candidate moves are the most forcing moves that come to my mind. One very forcing move that I com that comes to my mind is queen takes e7, rook takes e7, and other than that, I don't have any more checks. So I'm going to move on from the hierarchy of forcing moves. If you want to remember that easily, just remember CCTV. So checks, captures, threats, and vulnerabilities. If you want to look at forcing moves, most of the moves that you have to take a look in, in the chess position are those. They're Threats, checks, captures, or vulnerabilities. If a move is not doing any of them, if you just move a, make a move like queen g4, which is doing essentially nothing, then you should not even consider it. And well, one another another way of thinking about it is actually if CCTV 
checks, captures, threats, and vulnerabilities are all wrong or none of them work, then you can start looking at moves like QuinG4, but that's never the case. And I can say that out of experience. So Rook takes e7 is my first candidate move. Queen takes e7 is my second candidate move. Rook takes e2 would be a candidate move, but I already rejected it because of Rook d1. That's what we call short tactics. This is something you develop throughout experience. I think you're going to become quicker and quicker and calculating throughout your chess journey and your practicing. So it's something that will come naturally. Uh, so Rook takes e2 is not part of my candidate moves. So I rejected it. It would be a forcing move because it's, it is capturing uh, a piece. But as I said, we reject it. And other than that, it's... Uh, it's 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 tough to, to to find another move. My knight is attacked, so a natural move would be to take on f7, for example. I, I would be threatening something like knight d8 and rook takes g7. Um, but probably black is going to move. And then it's 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 yeah. So, but knight f knight f7 is a candid move as well because it's capturing a piece and it's creating a threat. Okay, I think we have three candid moves. I'm trying to look at the position a little bit further. Just in case we are missing something. 96 is another candy move. And if bishop takes e6, our, our, our dream of rook takes a7, or sorry, rook takes e7 followed by rook takes a7 comes true. So 96 is a candy move. And I think already here that I'm a little bit biased towards 96 because it looks beautiful. It's putting the knight in a, in a square that is attacked by three different pieces and it may work. Okay, so let's go throughout rook takes e7, queen takes e7, which are more forcing. And then let's take a look at the less forcing 96. Um, I think that's the, the best way to do it in an organized way. So rook takes e7. I already see that black plays queen takes e7. And I don't think I have a good continuation. One possibility would be something like queen a4. But even after rook takes e5, uh, I think rook takes a2. There's even rook a5 and I'm losing. So rook takes e7, queen takes e7, I reject. That's short tactics. It's pretty easy. It was pretty easy to reject this whole idea of rook takes e7. So I'm going to move on to the next candidate move, which is queen takes e7. But once again, knowing what I just said on the previous move with rook takes e7, I see queen takes e7. I mean, I don't want to just lose a queen, so rook takes e7, rook takes e7, rook takes a2. And my, my knight is hanging at the end of the line. If I don't take on a2, if I move the knight, bishop d5, and even though I take on a7 check, it's still not enough material to compensate for the lack of a rook, a whole rook. So I reject that line, which leaves me to the last, to, to the last move, which is 96. Or knight takes f7, which I also considered. Knight takes f7 looks less forcing than 96. So I'm going to take a look at 96 first. If I don't see anything wrong with that, maybe I can calculate knight takes f7 just if I have enough time. For example, if it was a classical game and I could afford to do that, I would. But it would be also a good idea to just go 96. If we don't see anything wrong with it, then we could play it as well. It depends on your situation. That's when practice and, and your situation vary whether you're playing in a tournament or you're, it's a bullet game. In this case, 96 candidate moves for my opponent. But what many people don't understand is that when I'm talking about candidate moves, it's not only your own candidate moves, but you should also use that same tool to find your opponent's best resources. After 96, this is a, th this is a fork. I'm attacking two rooks at the same time and threatening rook takes e7. So that makes it a very forcing move. 96 would be a mistake to not consider this move while using candid moves. So do you see how powerful candid moves are? If that if that move wasn't considered in the first place, you already failed. <laughs> as harsh as it sounds, you already failed to find a good a good make a good list of moves. So 96 a very forcing move, more forcing than I initially thought. Threatening these two rooks and rook takes e7 at the same time. So black has to do something about that, something quick, something forcing. The first idea that comes to my mind is queen takes e6, but after rook takes e6, I don't see any way black can compensate for the lack of a queen. So that should be winning for white. After 96, if f takes e6, I take on g7. We're up material now, so our advantage changes from being up in activity to a material advantage. And we have to do we do have to adapt to that new to that new reality, so to speak, uh, or that new position. Because the question becomes, can I convert this successfully? Does black have enough compensation for 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 the lack for to compensate for the lack of activity uh, for the lack of material? Sorry. Um, in this case, after f takes e6, rook takes e7, I think we do have we we do have a winning position. 
based on the previous motive I mentioned, which is this bishop cannot move. And if I can get away with making, you know, little improving moves like h4, king h2, then it should be good for me. Knight d6, f takes e6, rook takes g7. I would spend a little bit longer trying to evaluate this, but I'm quite sure for, for the purpose of this pur purposes of this video, I think I'm quite sure this is probably winning for white. Um, just to expand a little bit more on that, rook takes e7, rook d2 looks, does look scary. Uh, I no longer have rook takes e2 because of rook d1, that same motive as always. Um, but I can maybe play h4 if rook takes e2 already there. Do I have rook takes c7, queen takes e7, queen e4, followed by queen takes c2? That looks good. It looks a bit scary because black does have some pawns, three pawns that are passed on the queen side. So I do have to be careful on that with uh, on that on that note. Um 96 f takes e6, rook takes e7, rook d2. Can't can't hurt to calculate a little a little bit longer. Is there any any move that makes it an easy 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 conversion? I do have ideas of playing something like queen g4, threatening rook takes a2. But then I don't have this motive for rook takes e7, so never mind. 96, rook d2, 96, f takes e6, rook takes e7, rook d2, h4, rook takes c2, I have rook takes e7. And if black plays something like, I don't know, b5, I play king h2. But I'm not convinced. Well, okay, queen c5, I have rook f7, protecting f2. And if bishop anywhere, I still have the motive for rook takes e7, followed by rook takes a7. So I think I should be winning there. So knight e6, f takes e6, I think we can reject. We've rejected queen takes e6, we've rejected f takes e6. And if, if it's not any of them, I think black is probably in trouble. For instance, rook d2, don't, I don't think that's anything. If bishop takes e6, as we already Suggested rook takes e7 followed by rook takes e7 is winning. So I'm gonna go ahead and play knight e6, which is a mistake. And I'm very keen on doing this. So I'm going to probably upload this because this should have some some instructive value to it. So knight e6, there's something wrong with it. And we don't know, of course, we don't know. Which means that we have to redistribute our candor moves in the first place. Meaning that maybe knight takes f7 deserved. A better try from move one. But knight takes f7, I, I think black just plays rook, rook takes f7, and rook takes f7, and bishop takes f7, and that's it. We don't have anything. Which is amazing. The other move is knight e4, maybe. But w what threat does that create? Ah! It creates the threat of taking on a2. Because rook d1, there's king g2. Knight f3, therefore, is also a candidate move. So I already failed to consider candidate moves in the first place. Knight f3 and knight e4 are very good candidate moves that allow me to take on a2, and I didn't consider that. So that was already a mistake by me. Therefore, knight e4, what does black have to play? I'm going to do that same process for black. What does black have to play in this position? If black ever moves the bishop, once again, rook takes e7 is there. If black ever moves this pawn, of course, we take on g7. And black can't defend the bishop with a queen because there's always rook takes it. So, for example, knight e4, queen c4, rook takes a2. There's always queen takes c7 check, followed by probably mate or winning a, a queen or something like that. So, knight e4 or knight f3. They're both very serious moves. One of them probably is winning and the other one isn't. That's usually the way puzzles work. I see. So maybe knight, e knight f3 allows queen d6. Um, and I, if I trade... We're up a knight. So that shouldn't be it, actually. That should be fine. It's not that. Knight f3. Is there anything wrong with knight f3? Hmm... It just seems like knight e4 is closer to the king, so there are more motives towards it. But knight f3 may be working too. I don't see how black prevents rook takes a2. Oh, I see. Knight f3, queen c4. 
And and difference to ninety four, we had rook takes a two, but now rook takes a two, the queen takes a four, and we're losing. Ah, so knight of three, queen c four, and it's probably a draw. Sorry, yeah, it's probably a loss. I mean, I'm quite sure white can do something about it, right? The ninety four is probably the answer. Black plays rook d four, which we failed to consider, by the way. But I think now it it we can take on a two and yeah, rook takes e four, rook takes e seven, and there's this always this motive. Interesting. Wow. So in that in that in that sense, we're reaching the third stage of this video, which is summary. What I learned and what hopefully you learn as well is that I failed. It, it's funny. I was I was explaining how making a mistake right from the beginning is 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 um, very natural or it's very common when you're using candid moves. Uh, I was thinking, well, many people wouldn't even consider 96. But I was doing that same thing while saying that. And I didn't recognize it. It turns out that probably 96 f takes 6 rook takes 7 Probably then it's, it's not that easy. Um, I would still pick, pick white. That's easy for me to say though. It does look a little bit complicated. Um, so maybe I should have trusted that instinct more. Instinct more. So that's one. I was using calculation. And that same calculation was saying, hey, David, 96, f takes 6 rook takes 7 That's not very clear. So I, maybe I should have trusted that instinct more. Instinct more, sorry. But what truly should have... What truly was the mistake, in my opinion, was I didn't even consider 94 or 9 f 3 in my candid moves. I think that was the true uh, mistake of this whole video. I think I should have considered those moves because they're forcing, they're creating this threat on rook takes a2. And that, that would have made my life easier. Because after 96, after all of that insecurity, I would have always been able to go back to 94 and think, think eh, maybe this is the right way. So 94, it's not easy to, to, to see what black does. In fact, black can't do anything. Black will lose after something like queen c4, let's say. I just take. And this is what I was saying. There's queen takes a 7 at least. Probably there's mate in, in, in some other line, maybe knight c5. But this is simple enough. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope that was instructive. I know I got it wrong, but hey, getting it wrong as well is, is also instructive. I think, I think I may do this more often. I usually don't upload the ones that I, where I'm wrong. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm very happy to make these videos. If you're enjoying them, I'm doubly, doubly happy. And uh, thank you very much. If you really enjoyed it and you do think these are instructive, please like and subscribe. That would really support this and the algorithm would like it and then I would create a bigger audience and more people would be benefited and everyone would be happy. The world would be a better place. Thank you very much for watching. Click on those two things that just came up into the screen. Crazy. Have a nice day.